Hey, it's Dave at DA Griffin Hubby. I've been out here in the garage working on the layout, uh, working with the foam. I've done some videos before on the way I do my scenery. I usually start though when I already have the massive foam built up. I just thought I'd do a quick, how do I get to that point video because I was uh, kind of enjoying what I was doing here. This is the new one and a half inch up level that I've shaved down just uh, with a hot wire foam cutter, just at various angles. And then what I'm going to do is take some of those pieces that came off. I think this piece came off down at a further corner. I've cut it already to be on an angle and roughly the shape of the curve up here. So all I'm gonna do is put some caulk on the bottom, and spread it out with a spackle knife. And then kind of place it and slide it a little bit get that caulk to really sit. Now you can see it's overhanging. The caulk's sticking out. Not a big deal. The caulk is harder to cut with the hot wire foam cutter. Um, it can also be a pain when it sticks out between the layers, so you just have to make sure to either cut it down or hide it when you're doing the carving. This other piece here, kind of fit this contour nice, so I'm just going to stick that in there. Again, caulk it down. While it dries, is use some of the same nails I used for the track, just to kind of pin it in place. If it doesn't go in right, just take it out and put it back in there. Now, depending on how you carve it, some of these can stay in there. They don't need to, because once you, once the caulk dries, it'll mostly hold it in place. And then once it's been shaped and painted, that will really hold it in place. Um, so I've got a bunch of scraps, so I'm just kind of putting them down there and seeing how it goes. Uh, I never put too much thought or planning into how I place these other than kind of just looking for an overall buildup of general shape. Uh, doesn't matter if they sit properly, if they meet up, there are gaps. The more random it is, more likely that it will look somewhat realistic. And you can stick random odd shapes in there too. It doesn't really matter. If you don't like it once you start carving, you just carve it down. Now, the reason I'm using these pieces instead of uh, uncut blocks of foam is because I just happened to cut these off and flip them over and it kind of carried the contour up. So I liked that. So that's why I'm doing it this way. You could certainly stick a piece like this here. So it doesn't look like a whole lot yet, but once it, the, once the caulk dries and I scrape all this down, it'll look a lot better. Then the upper level will kind of just fade into the lower level, except for spots like this, where the tracks are close together. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do there. In certain spots, I'm sure I could do some sort of curved wall. Also, because of the height of this track, I could just angle this a little bit and build this up with uh, just scraps and kind of just have a sharp decline up a hill. I think that would be fine. It'll be interesting to fiddle with that and see how that work turns out. Another way to use some of the scraps is to help mock up other scenery. Um, I'm using these pieces here that I just cut to kind of mock up where the mountain might go because it, it kind of had it has a curved contour so that kind of fits the space a little bit and kind of helps me visualize. You can see I've carved it similarly to the other corner, but instead of the scrap pieces from the carving, I'm just using 
various thickness corners from the sheets that I cut. Drawbacks of the foam. There are certainly spots where the foam is not flat and you end up with track that either dips or it doesn't sit quite right. You can manage that with uh, just a little bit of extra foam underneath the roadbed, or you can ignore it. Uh, it depends how much of an issue it is and where the irregularity falls. With this track being so stiff, especially compared to the 027, I'm not really having much of an issue except for over here where the seam in the track fits right over, sits right over the issue in the table. Between these two sheets, it drops down considerably right here. You can see there's space underneath the foam that's sitting on the upper level because this foam, the bottom foam, drops down so much in that space. But it's not an issue for the upper level because that's been overlapped. So I think overlapping the foam will take care of a lot of those issues. You can make temporary tunnel portals to help you figure out where and how big a tunnel portal needs to be. I cut these six inches high in the center and I honestly don't know how wide, I just kind of winged it, uh, put it on the track, ran some cars with a big overhang and trimmed a little bit. I now know kind of exactly how big my tunnel portals need to be. The first layout I was working on, I actually used uh, Lego tunnel portals because I can rebuild those to any shape and size, uh, but this is easier. If, this, if it rubs, you just cut a little more foam off. Then if I decide I want to set a building here or something like that, I can either just cut it out, uh, like a real building might be cut out into the landscape, or I can build it back up or cut it out and build it up. So it's, it's you're left with the ability to do whatever you want, as opposed to something like paper mache, where you end up with a hollow shell. This, I can dig further into any portion of the layout uh, for any sort of addition later on. So I won't have to worry about, oh, is there anything under that? I can just dig in there and I, it will be foam. So as you can see, I have a large pile of scrap foam. Uh, also numerous garbage bags with smaller pieces in it. I still have the sheets I got of the two inch. So I should have plenty to build this up. Uh, I try to use every bit of the foam and not waste it. Like I said, all the little, all the small pieces can be used to build up and make rocks and whatnot, uh, shapes, landscape, anything really. Uh, so I've found it so far to be extremely versatile. I'm using the foam as a tabletop. It will be pretty much the only material I use for landscape. I will not be doing plaster or anything like that or paper mache. Uh, I might add, like I have in this corner here, I might use sand and dirt and stone, uh, but I'm not going to use any sort of plaster or anything else, just the foam, which is, in my opinion, very versatile, very easy to work with, and it's very light. I've had very heavy train boards and layouts in the past, and this is just very, it's light, it's easy to work with, and easy to change later. And you can always mock up structures like my tunnel portal. So it might be obvious, but I'm a big fan of the foam. I don't really have many complaints. It's light, it's easy to work with, easy to change and adapt as your layout grows. As long as you don't need to stand on it, you should be okay. That being said, in this corner, I have leaned pretty hard on that corner. Um, not on an elbow or anything like that, but if I try to space out my weight, I've leaned on that and it's, it's been okay. And it's not a structural, material, but it's it's strong, especially if you use the thicker. Um, so this upper level now is sitting on three and a half inches of foam. There's a two inch base and this is inch and, a, and the upper level is an inch and a half. So that's pretty sturdy. Maybe you could walk on it. I don't know. I'm certainly not going to try. But uh, if you're worried about the strength of it, as long as you have decent bench work, I think the foam is a fantastic way to go. So that's it for now. I've got plenty of work to do, plenty. I wanna get a mountain going over here and some track on top of it, so I'm gonna be busy. 
So in my opinion, the foam is a fantastic material to work with. It's easy, it's light, it's, I'd like to say cheap, but not really. Um, but I've been enjoying using it. I've used it before in layouts, but not to this extent. So this is, this is working out well, as far as I'm concerned. How I'll feel about it in a year or two, that will remain to be seen. Um, somebody had raised a question about the durability of doing the edging. And I have noted in a couple spots where I've made a couple of dings in the foam and taken some of the paint and foam off um, just by walking around working in the room. But I don't consider that a problem because I can just touch up paint that a little bit and you won't even tell. So not as durable as other materials, but easily fixable. And you won't notice once it's fixed. Thanks for watching. Please like. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on D. Griffin Hobby.